Before I start the episode, I wanted to give a big thank you to the good folks that donated to my Patreon back in April. Epidemic Mike Paz, E. Rocco, Darren O'Loughlin, Adrian Ma, and Brent Solly. Hopefully, you're enjoying the extra content that I'm posting on my Patreon page. and wiring. It's a love-hate relationship. Well, it's not physically demanding, for me it's more of a mental challenge. Reading diagrams, tracing wires, figuring out the bare minimum of what the engine needs electronically to start up. The simplest things like a blown fuse or unhooked ground can send you back hours, if not days. But at least, once you figure out that the problem was as simple as that, you sigh in relief knowing it wasn't a fried ECU. Originally, I wanted to take the MR2GZ wiring and modify it to fit and work with the 86GTS wiring. But because I got a new GZ setup that came with a plug and play harness, I won't have to do that. Thank God. So now that the motor is in, I can find out if this harness is truly plug and play. I've never actually looked at the harness thoroughly, so let's see if everything is there. Two ECUs. Extra map sensor. By laying out the harness, I can get an idea of how it'll be laid out on the engine. Here I thought I was just going to plug in the harness, but I actually have to remove quite a bit of stuff on the intake side along with the fuel rail to get the harness in place. As you can see, the harness bolts up here and here. Harness is now in place. I can put the fuel rail back on. Be careful with the injector seals. Make sure they're fully seated before tightening the fuel rail bolts. If not, they're gonna get pinched and fuel's gonna get everywhere. With the harness in place, I can now proceed to match each of the plugs and where they need to go. This harness, it's, it's very well made. Not only are each plug's individually labeled, they're all at the right length to go where they need to be.
This portion of the harness goes in the cabin through the firewall from the opening on the passenger side. This portion connects to the ECU and to the body harness of the car. Rain's coming down. No wonder it's been muggy as fuck all day. And you know what that means. I'm done for the day. Now, this is the first problem I ran into as far as wiring goes. It's not due to the plug and play harness, but due to the GZ motor having the alternator on the driver side versus the 4AG having the alternator on the passenger side. Because of this, the harness for the alternator is way too short to reach. Easy fix, just extend the wiring. Ever since I found the two ECUs in the harness box, I've been wondering if there's a difference between the two since they had different part numbers, but both are GZ ECUs. Cause you know, sometimes you can use different ECUs from different cars with the same motor. I wonder if that's the case with this one. Quick Google search revealed that the electronics are slightly different. And according to the person providing that info was none other than the person that sold me the setup. In fact, the ECUs in this picture are the ones that I'm currently holding. Small world, ain't it, Max? So which ECU do I use? Well, knowing the guy that actually sold me the setup personally, I contacted him and he said it's the AE92 ECU that I'll need to use. The GZ ECU has three ports, a 26 pin, a 16 pin, and a 22 pin. The 26 and 16 pin ports have the respective plugs from the wiring harness that goes into them. So where the fuck is the 22 pin plug? More importantly, what does the 22 pin port do? By opening the ECU and looking at the circuit board, you can see what each pin actually does. So where are those wires located on the original 4AG? Oh, you know, on the 14 pin plug that should be located on the passenger side kick panel. But it's not there. Lucky for me, I have a spare GTS harness that I can reference. So this is the plug I'm looking for, right here. By opening it up a bit, I can see where a lot of the wires go. Referencing these wires, I can now trace where the missing plug should be. I ended up finding the plug, or what's left of it. The original owner had for some reason cut the 14 pin plug. Half of the wires were hidden in the electrical tape. Not on purpose, they were just cut that short. And the other half was just kind of dangling about. You can see here that these wires are the same as these. Problem solved. Now I just need to match the GZ pins to their corresponding 4AG pins. Now, to help me with that, I drew up this little chart as a cheat sheet. This chart represents the pins on the GZ ECU, 
and the printout is of course the pins for the 4AG ECU. And since I don't have the original 22 pin male plug I'll have to improvise and use these little guys. They're the little female pins that you insert into the plastic male plugs. They, they came with my harness kit from eBay and they fit snugly onto the ECU pin. There you go. As long as each pin is properly isolated to prevent shorting each other out, this should work. With majority of the wiring connected, I technically should be able to fire this car. It. Time's up. I'm going to Japan. Laters. so far so we're pretty good pretty good I'm just gonna turn in for the night I wanted to grab some food but I'm way too tired for that I'll catch you guys tomorrow hopefully